A float with Henry Morgan. A float with Henry Morgan, written for radio by Warren Barry and a George Edwards production. Geoffrey Hunter convinces Captain Henry Morgan that he was an unfortunate victim of circumstances and had no hand in the stealing of the Aztec necklet. In Cuba, Dolores has, against her will, settled down to a dull social life, while her father, Don Pietro, thinks in vain of ways to learn of Morgan's plans. Diaz has rapidly grown tired of Kitty and has threatened to sell her in the slave market. Meanwhile, Morgan learns of wealth in Panama City, and as he plans to sack it, sends Jeffrey Hunter to Cuba to learn movements of the fleet, which is assembled there preparing to go to Panama City to take back to Spain this great wealth. Jeffrey and Hero are landed on the Cuban coast with exactly seven days to obtain this information. Posing as a Dutch gem merchant named Van Luc, he calls upon Don Pietro, hoping that he will unsuspectingly give him the information. Don Pietro calls Dolores to show Jeffrey her jewels. When she arrives, Jeffrey, to his horror, realizes that she is the woman he knew in Jamaica as Antoinette de Lacy. This is almost too incredible. Jeffrey Hunter, here in Cuba, in the city of Havana. I thought you were dead. I thought you died in the swamps where you so rightly belonged. Dolores, my child, you are making a mistake. This is my heir Van Luke from Amsterdam. From Amsterdam? Ha, what story is this? What has he been telling you, Father? He is most interested in buying jewels. That is why I wanted you to come and show him the Aztec necklace. Undoubtedly, he is very interested in jewels. And that on behalf of Captain Morgan. Captain Morgan? What is this you're saying? You have nothing to say for yourself, Mr. Hunter. You surely could not have forgotten me or forgotten those times we spent together in the garden of Government House in Port Royal. Oh, you surely have not forgotten how you took me in your arms and swore eternal love and how you would never see me again when you sailed away with Captain Morgan. Oh, the pain from being parted from me was so great that you had to follow me here. Is that the reason you have come all this way to Havana? So, this is a man that you knew when you were in Port Royal, Dolores? This is the man who told me all about Captain Morgan's plans, Father. What are you doing here in Havana, Hunter? Tell me. Senorita's making the thing. You fool, Hunter. How long do you think it would take my father to make a check upon your story? How long would it take to realize that you are an imposter? Not as long as it took to discover that you were one. Oh, but I was so much cleverer than you, Hunter. It was just by chance that I was discovered. But you, you came here in your stupid, pig-headed English way to the very home where I live. Did you miss me, Jeffrey, when I was gone? No. You see, I didn't have much time to even think about you. I had to undo the work which you had done. I had to find Captain Morgan as soon as I possibly could and warn him that I had told you all his plans. So, that is how he escaped from the net. No, I was too late in warning him, Don Pietro. Captain Morgan forced his own way out of the trap which you had set for him. You were very clever, weren't you, Senorita, on the island? You planned things very well, didn't you? It was so very easy for you to make it appear that it was I who had taken the necklace. And what of Kitty? Where is she? Where has Dietz taken her? I do not think that will concern you, Mr. Hunter. You are in no position to ask questions. Do you remember, Father, you said that opportunity had given you one chance to cap catch Captain Henry Morgan, and you hoped that it would give you a second chance. Do you not think the second chance has arrived? Why did Henry Morgan send you here to Havana, Hunter? I'm sorry, but... That is something just between Captain Morgan and myself. If you are a wise young man, you will answer us now while you have the opportunity. You will answer all our questions in the luxurious surroundings of my home and in comfort. Why? Because otherwise you will be made to answer them in the cold, damp cellars of this house where the Inquisition works. I can't tell you anything. I... You can, Jeffrey Hunter, and you will. What is Captain Morgan planning to do next? Answer me or else I will scratch your eyes out. I don't know. You English pig, you will. Oh, Dolores, no, stop that. 
This is not the place to force information from him. Let us be practical about this business. Odoan, summon the guard. Place this man under arrest. Have you anything to say to us before the guard comes to take you, Jeffrey Hunter? I would just like to ask one thing. Oh, and what is that? What happened to the real Antoinette de Lisse? <laughs> what manner of man are you, Jeffrey Hunter? Here you are facing the tortures of the Inquisition, and you are asking about a woman whom you have never set eyes upon. Antoinette de Lisse is safe and quite well at the moment, is she not, Father? What have you done with her? We have done nothing to her yet. But tomorrow she goes to the slave market. Is there no pity at all in your hearts? You kept that woman here in prison for months, kept her captive. You used her name to serve your purpose. Can't you now have the generosity to send her on to Jamaica? No. Why should we? She is a very beautiful woman. And the price that she fetches at the market will go towards buying several new gowns. Dolores, what are you doing here at my home? Eh, this is an unexpected pleasure. I have some news which will interest you very much, I am sure, dear. I have a task for you to perform, one which will bring joy to your heart. Eh, Dolores, something has happened. Eh, there's a new sparkle in your eyes. You have suddenly become alive once again. What is it? My news. It will surprise you. Eh, come in here, into this room. Uh, get out, Kitty. Leave us alone. No, dear. This news is for Kitty, too. It will do her good to hear it. Stand over there, Kitty, and listen to what I have to say to Dia. My news concerns someone whom she knew very well once. Do you remember Dia, the man called Jeffrey Hunter? Jeffrey? You've had word of him? Oh, tell me, please, please. He did escape from the swamps, didn't he? He told me he'd escape. He told you he would? Yes. It was when we were hiding in a stone hut overlooking the swamp. One day when you were out Dolores walking, Jeffrey Hunter came and he found me in the hut. He told me he'd planned to escape from the swamps and, and that as soon as he did, he'd, he'd come and rescue me. So that is the reason, Kitty, that you've lost all your fight and fire. Ever since we landed here in Havana, you've been different. You've been thinking that that wide-faced Englishman was going to come and rescue you, eh? That's why you've been a changed woman since you came to Havana. You've been dreaming of Jeffrey Hunter again, haven't you? Well, you know where your dream is going to put you, don't you, Kitty? Into tomorrow's sales at the market. Oh, no, Dad, please don't do that to me. That would be too cruel. Oh, tomorrow's sales should be an interesting one, really. And when a delicy is being put up for auction, too. <laughs> we must see that they go in the same lot, Dad. Never mind about that, Dolores. You asked me when you first came in if I remember Jeffrey Hunter. Mayhap he knew that we were coming here to Cuba. Mayhap he had come here to rescue Kitty. Jeffrey? Here in Havana? Well, what are you saying? Yes, what is this you say, Dolores? He had the impertinence to go to my father, posing as a Dutch gem merchant. He had been sent to Cuba, I believe, by Henry Morgan. I believe Henry Morgan has sent him here as his spy. He is unwilling, at the moment, to tell us what he knows of Morgan's plans. Hmm. He will soon tell. You want the Inquisition question him, that will make him talk. Oh, undoubtedly it will make him talk. You mean... Torture him? Oh, no, you mustn't do that to Jeffrey. No, please don't torture him. <laughs> Knowing the feelings that you have for Jeffrey Hunter, Diaz, I thought maybe you would like to be his examiner. There is nothing in the world that would give me greater pleasure, Dolores. Please don't torture him. Don't harm him, please. Here we are together again. Perhaps you would like to answer my questions. How subtle of them to make you my inquisitor. <laughs> you know where you are, Hunter? You're on the rack. An instrument which makes men scream out their innermost secrets. So, you had better be wise, Teddy. What have you come to Havana for? May I have to find you? <laughs> I'm pleased that you are being stubborn because I am remembering certain things. I'm remembering the night that you came to the Dolphin Tavern and knocked me to the floor. I'm also remembering another night, Hunter, when you hit me into the harbor. Knowing that I remember all these things, 
You still not want to tell me? I have answered you. Hmm. Move your head and look around the walls. You will find the most interesting thing. The dungeon is deep in the bowels of the earth. In iron brackets around the wall, flaming torches send out yellow dancing lights. It picks out the pattern of the large square stones of the walls upon which hang in orderly rows instruments of pain-searing torture. A boot, a scroll, the widow's cap, chains and weights, cruel black whips, gadgets conceived by diabolical minds to drag out secrets and confessions torturously rend bodies from souls. The light playfully caresses the strip to the waist body of Jeffrey Hunter as he hangs suspended between the bone-breaking wheels of the rack. Two figures in black stand at the wheels, eager to twist and make the ratchets click. A faint red glow reflects on his face from a brazier, burning white-hot coals, from which protrudes the menacing handles of white-hot pincers. You see, there are many ways to make a man talk. A man will only say as much as he wants to. <laughs> when I have finished with you, Hunter, you'll want to tell me everything. What diabolical fate has put Jeffrey Hunter into the hands of arch-enemy Dietz? You will learn if Jeffrey Hunter escapes from the pain which Dietz has promised him in the next exciting episode of Afloat with Henry Morgan. Henry Morgan.